Okay, everyone, I just thought I would show you my uh, my little RV solar install and talk a little bit about the panel and the charge controller and the, the charge controller interface, which I think is really cool. So let's start with the panel. So this is a HQST flexible solar panel bought off Amazon. You can also get it on eBay, 188 bucks, and it's been performing really well. Um, really happy with it. I've, I've had it for months, so that's all I can tell you. But it's definitely performed to spec, and uh, it's it's been a good purchase. Now, <clears throat> the top of my RV, I did not want to drill any holes into, so I did a bunch of research on different adhesives, and I have some experience with boating and that kind of stuff. So, what I ended up doing was, um, I put a big, big washer on the back of this, then a little washer, and then a nut, all on a bolt. And then I poke some holes in this uh, in this big washer, and um, and I use 3M 5200. This is a polyurethane adhesive, super adhesive stuff, uh, very tenacious. Um, and then and put that down. And then along the perimeter, I use 3M 4200, which is a little bit less sticky. So if this solar panel ever fails and I need to remove it, hopefully I don't tear off too much of the gel coat of the fiberglass here. <clears throat> so anyway, that's the that's the goal. I've driven it about 300 miles so far, and it's still it's still here. So <laughs> feel good about that. All right, and then coming back here, I just covered the wire with some split loom, and um, just uh, secured it <clears throat> all the way back to the back. <clears throat> I was really I really wanted to run it down somewhere, but there just wasn't anywhere convenient, and I didn't want to mount it back here, so. I ended up with uh, with this type of an install. So, and then I just ran uh, I ran the wire down through the cover here, and then I ran it up underneath the chassis. Um, um, so anyway, that was my experience so far. And then we'll talk about the charge controller and all that. Okay, doke. So now we are inside the RV, and um, the in general, you want to put the charge controller as close to the battery compartment as you can without it being in the battery compartment. Um, so I chose to put it right underneath this bench seat here. You'll kind of see where I put it. I made a little plexiglass enclosure just to protect it from anything because we use this for storage as well when we're traveling. And I went with the Victron. This is uh, the MPPT is a little, uh, quite a bit more efficient than the PWM style charge controllers they're also more expensive like you know three or four times as expensive this one was 100 bucks 99 dollars on uh from bay marine supply which i can't uh, recommend enough they're really helpful wonderful people anyway they're out of san diego you can find them so uh 75 15 what does that mean 75 means it can receive up to 75 volts and which would be the case if you had a you know uh uh, solar panels in series as opposed to parallel. I only have one solar panel so it doesn't matter and it'll put out you know anywhere from 15 to 20 volts and then the 15 is how many amps that the charge controller will put out to your battery bank. Now um, if you have one solar panel and it's rated at say six six and a half amps then the most you'll put out to your battery bank is six and a half amps so this one will be adequate uh, this charge controller is adequate for that type of a setup I could add another 100 watts of solar and still be within the range if you go over the the instructions say that it's not uh, it, it'll just it'll just limit the output to 15 amps so all right so that's the charge controller pretty easy to install read the instructions as usual now this is the super cool thing this is the Victron smart dongle um, and this thing connects to your uh, to your smartphone, either Android or um, or Apple product, and it's been really cool. I'm going to show you it in action here in a minute, but um, super easy to install. It just goes in a little communication port on the bottom of the charge controller itself, and then it does a quick uh, firmware update, and uh, and then you just pair it with your device, and you're off to the races. It's really cool. So there we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit about the interface, but I want to show you that we're uh, we're inside, but we're looking down on the top of the RV right now. 
It's um, it's about 10 a.m. on June 15th, and I'm at 38 degrees north latitude. So bear that in mind when we look at the panel wattage um, in terms of the angle of the sun, because obviously a that's a fixed panel. It's not oriented directly at the sun, so that it's not going to be totally efficient. So anyway, this is <clears throat> so this is the interface. Um, this is what it looks like. You can you can do this on your um, on your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, uh, whatever whatever you got, um, pretty much. And you just download the app, and then uh, it that Bluetooth dongle. Um, will connect to your uh, to your device and give you all this information. As you can tell, it, we're we're inside the house and we're still getting great signal. This this works about about 50 or 60 feet away, and then you lose signal, which I think is pretty good, actually. So all right, so let's just go back to this this part is the disco discovery mode. So this is our our little uh, our charge controller again. It's con connected to the Bluetooth dongle, so you just touch on that and then it connects. You can only connect one device at a time. All right. So uh, if you're if you find that you can't connect with one device and you have other devices around, make sure that they're also not connected. All right. So up here you see what the panel wattage is doing, 68 watts, and you can see it's you know it's definitely it's very it's very sunny, but it's at we're still pretty early in the morning, so the angle is not favorable. All right. And then uh, and this is the voltage of the panel right here. This is the battery state. It's at 14.05 volts, and um, it is putting out to the battery, so from from the solar panel to the charge controller, and then to the battery, 4.6 amps. All right. <clears throat> now it's in absorption phase right now. There, there's three possible uh, charge states here, which would be bulk, absorption, and float. All right. So when this goes to float, you if you if you have this, you'll notice that the panel wattage drops down to about seven or eight watts. That's not because the wattage of the panel is, um, you know, suddenly inefficient. It's just that the charge controller is controlling the charge, so it doesn't allow that uh, the panel to put out that much energy to the battery. So, all right, and then down here you see load output. This load output, I don't have a load connected to this other than the Bluetooth dongle, which I think is what this is. So this, it, it, the Bluetooth dongle draws a little bit of power in order to send the signal. So, all right, so 68 watts, 15.5 volts, I've covered all that. Now, the, the other part that is pretty cool about this, and we'll just go into this part right here, this little wrench up here allows you to, allows you to change a few functions here. Um, I haven't gotten into load street light and these other ones, so I'll, I'll let you read the directions on that one. But I have gotten into battery, which is which is pretty interesting. So it comes with a default uh, setting, um, and the default setting is uh, uh, absorption is 14.4, float is 13.8, and the equalization charge is 16.2. Now I changed the equalization charge on mine to 15.5 just to be more conservative. Um, because uh, sometimes the RV is away and I just wanted to, it, it's not that critical for me. So um, so I just changed it uh, to a little bit lower voltage. If you have, if your battery manufacturer specifies an equalization voltage, use that voltage. Um, mine did not. So I just to pick something that was uh, basically what Trojan flooded uh, batteries recommend, which is not what I have. I have a different battery. So, and then you could do uh, auto equalization interval anywhere from zero which is off to i think 250 days something like that so anyway super cool settings so all right now the other thing is uh, okay so we're back to live data here we're on absorption i wanted to show you the history function of this because this is really cool on the iphone these things will will scroll um so if you you, you just see you'll just see this on the iphone so you have to scroll this across i didn't know that i figured it out later so zero days today 60 watts is currently what's going on uh the maximum wattage and voltage is is was 68 and 21.3 the battery state started off at 12.82 and it's gone up to 14.39 so it's on absorption right now so so all these days you'll see this one I actually equalized on these two days, but on other days you'll see 14.1, 14.39, 14.42. That's because that's the absorption voltage um, that is 
that is used. Um, so that'll always be your your maximum voltage uh, if if you have that as your absorption voltage. So, and then you can go back in history, you know, that was yesterday, the day before. Now, an interesting thing is on on the watt hours, now the, the RV here was sitting, not being used, there was no draw on the batteries or anything. So it didn't, it didn't allow that much wattage to go or that much energy to go to flow to the batteries because they didn't need it, right? So, but if we go back several days, we were on the road, we were camping, 520 watt hours. So uh, um, that day, obviously, we had a lot of chargers going. We had uh, you know fans going and all kinds of stuff happening, television happening. So um, so therefore, there was enough draw on the batteries to require um, uh, a lot of uh, energy to go into the batteries. So you could see the the minimum voltage of the battery that day was 12.7. The maximum was 12.39, which is the absorption level and you can go back go back all the way i think it stores 30 days worth of data so you can see when i just put it in the battery was pretty low so just to go back the equalization you should read about it's really pretty fascinating basically it just it desulf desulfonates the the battery um uh, plates because they become uh, sulfated uh, due to the chemical reaction and what this does is for a brief period of time um, it will it will reverse that process and you do that periodically you know depending on what your battery manufacturer recommends I'm just doing it every 30 days so it drives it up to 15.5 approximately volts and keeps it there for a period of time depending on a formula that you can read about <laughs> But basically it wasn't very long like if you look here it was it was 34 minutes um so it's not a huge amount of time but it's uh, hopefully enough to to reverse some of that sulfation so anyway bottom line uh charge controller has been flawless um the bluetooth dongle and the interface the app has been really amazing uh it works great a couple little things just remember if you have if you have a bunch of devices and they're all um, have Bluetooth on, <clears throat> it can. Uh, I had a problem where I had you know four or five iPads, and the kids and all that, and and uh, a couple of phones, and they all had Bluetooth on, and I couldn't connect any of them to the the uh, Bluetooth uh, to the charge controller. So I had to go around and turn all those off. So if you have a group and they're on a boat or something like that, just make sure people turn off their Bluetooth. Um, because uh, you can get interference that way. So anyway, I wanted to make this video because I, I couldn't find anything really that showed the interface of the Bluetooth, uh, the the Victron Bluetooth um, charge controller dongle. And um, I hope uh, this is helpful. Um, I couldn't be happier with this whole setup. It's been, it's been really cool. All right.